Hi, Brennan here. Uh, I wanted to just briefly go over some of the stuff I've been thinking about and working with lately and actually just get your feedback. Yes, you, your feedback about what I what you think I should make content wise. Um, I've been exploring various CMSs and different front ends. Um, again, I'm not going to leave WordPress. Uh, still have a lot of love for WordPress and it's a great CMS, but it seems like a it's always a good time to uh, explore what other options are out there and to see kind of how we think about our data structures. And so really I wanted to separate my back end and front end as much as I can uh, and explore different ways to bring that data into front ends. And so I've looked at a lot of different CMSs. We'll, we'll kind of go through that and a couple of different front ends and different frameworks that we can check out. Uh, but I wanted to see what you think is useful. I mean, what what do you, what kind of sites do you guys build that some of these considerations might be important for? So, um, no, f let's start with consideration. So, with CMS, uh, you you want to consider whether it's open source or not, and if that's important to you, you want to see if there's a self-hosted option, and you know that might be more or less free in terms of you can run it on your server and you pay just for the server hosting versus a, a cloud hosting option. That's usually going to cost you extra money, uh, but you know, you're not dealing with server overhead. And then you got to think about what kind of features you need, whether you need authentication, you need multi-user, you need file upload, that kind of stuff can make it a little more complicated. And so you, you gotta make sure you understand what the scope of your project is. And, you know, just beyond the project scope, you gotta think about the budget and the client needs as well, and what kind of uh, comfort comfortability level they have in terms of uploading content. And then you gotta think about the API structure. If you're gonna go for like a, just a traditional like REST API or use something like GraphQL. Um, and then also think about whether you need relational data or many to many relationships in terms of, you know, do you need to relate two custom post types together? And so those are all considerations you want to think about in terms of what your project is and, and what the, what the scope's going to be. Um, and so I've got a bunch of content management systems here that I've looked at some more than others, obviously WordPress I have uh, up here. Um, you can, you know, if you're watching this video, you probably, you probably already know what WordPress is. Um, but one of the things I'm exploring in WordPress is using WP GraphQL, which was just added in the last couple of weeks as a canon canonical plugin to WordPress. And so I, I want to explore what the differences between these two data structures are and, and why you might want to choose one or the other. Um, and then I've got a bunch of other content management systems. Directus is another open, open source headless CMS. Um, and you know, Ghost, Noco DB, Strapi, Supabase, Pocketbase, all of these are open source, and most of them also have a cloud hosted option as well. We'll take a look at that. Um, and then I've got some various front ends uh, that we'll get to sort of after. But I just want to take a look at the content management portion of what I'm talking about. So I've got a couple examples here that will make it hopefully easier to understand kind of what I'm talking about here, what I'm talking about. CMSs and databases and content management in general, things like that. So uh, I'll just jump over here to, first to Airtable. So Airtable is a, you know, you can use it as a CMS effectively. And I've got um, just some, you know, demo art exhibits with some custom fields. We've got a description, we've got a featured image, we've got a short description, start date, all that stuff. And then these over here are like related databases. So like, you can see the city here that maps to this other sort of custom post type I have, right? Where the, we've got um, the cities. And so that you can relate all these things back to the individual exhibits. Okay. And in a similar way, let's take a look um, over at uh, Directus. Let me pull it open here. Um, you can come and make, uh, you know, custom post types effect essentially, right? So I can uh, create a new, I have exhibits here. We have our first exhibit uh, where we have a featured image, a short description, and a title. And so you can also edit these and add additional fields to this, right? So if you want to add all these different fields uh, to your structure, you can do that. And then all the other uh, collections will have those fields, right? So similarly, uh, here's another one. Base Row um, has a very 
uh, nice free version and the paid version is pretty cheap. But again, it's, it's very similar where you have your, I have my exhibits, I've got categories, right? I've got the cities and you can relate all these things together, right? So we have our, the name of our exhibit, we've got the description, all that same stuff. And you, again, you can relate these to other tables. Okay. And similarly, let's go on to Superbase. Superbase um, is another sort of open source alternative to Firebase and you can self host this as well, or you can pay for the cloud. Uh, but again, we have the, uh, we have our exhibit name, we have featured image, we've got description. So all, all the same fields that you're used to. Um, and then you can also relate all these tables together. You can have row level security, you can have various uh, authentication policies in terms of who can upload here. Um, very complex stuff that you can, you, there's a lot of a lot of stuff in Superbase you can get into. Um, but that's, that's essentially, they're, they're all sort of working in a similar way, right? Where, you, you know, you've, you got your your uh, uh, custom tables that you can relate together and uh, add more items to. All right, so let's take a look at NoCodeDB. This is again a free version um, of like Airtable, essentially. It's it's built sort of as an Airtable, um, you know, in a free a open source Airtable, right? So you can import your Airtable data in here. And again, we've got our, you know, our title, description, all the, all the fields that we're used to. Again, you can come and link these to other, um, other records, right? So we've got our cities database here. We can relate all that stuff together. All right. So, um, what other CMSs that I have on here? Strappy. I don't have that booted up right now, but again, very similar. All these are going to be very similar pocket base. It, I like pocket base a lot. It's, it's a very lightweight version sort of of super base. And again, these can be, these can all be self-hosted or you can use the cloud version of, I believe all of these have a cloud version. Some of these are going to be a paid cloud version. Some of these have a free tier in the cloud version that you can use. Uh, but again, you can also self-host all these. So what I've got here, um, and again, this is I'm th covering a lot here, but I have a, uh, a Coolify installation in the cloud where I can basically use essentially Docker uh, installations to um, containerize all my different stuff, right? So I've got Directus, GoCMS, NoCodeDB. I can add another um, CMS in here. These are all just you know testing demo stuff. So you probably wouldn't you wouldn't run all of these on your <laughs> on your project necessarily, but you could, and you can associate that with a particular uh, client site, or you can reuse these things uh, between client sites. Um, so there's a lot of self-hosting options. There's a lot of open source options. There's a lot, just a lot of stuff that you can go through. Um, and so really, I just wanted to kind of give a brief overview of that and what I'm thinking about and working on. Um, if I scroll down a little bit here, I've got some examples of how that data is then fetched onto a front end. So it's like, you can see it visually. So like here I'm fetching those exhibits, uh, right here, I'm using a GraphQL query. Um, and so that's just pulling in that data. And once you have the, your query, you can then take the data and bind it to the front end, uh, collection, you know, so you can display your data. So that's what uh, Web Studio looks like. Again, that's a free, they have a free version of it. I think you need to pay to use the CMS option like this, but it's pretty affordable. Uh, but it's a, a pretty decent front end for rendering this kind of stuff. So here's another example from Div Hunt. Again, very similar where you connect a REST API and then you can then uh, bind the field data into your front end. So I, you know, you can see all the fields here. We've got the exhibit name, the related cities, the related artists, the featured image. So all that good stuff, all that data is pulling in from any of these backends, right? So it can pull in from Airtable, it can pull in from Directus, it can pull in here. You get the idea, hopefully. Um, but that is essentially what we're looking at in terms of how you get data from one CMS back or, or use any CMS that you'd like in, as your backend and you can then choose whatever front end you'd like to render it in. And so um, I just wanted to give a couple examples. Uh, there's another one here, Toddle. 
I've made a couple of videos on, but again, you can uh, add the API and your various paths and any query parameters. You can authenticate uh, with session cookies or JWTs or whatever you need to. Um, if you need to authenticate into your data, you can do that. So I uh, just want to give a couple examples of, I know I threw a lot in here, right? There's, there's a lot going on, but I wanted to, yeah, actually get someone, get your feedback. If you have a project you're working on, if you have a client that's, um, you know, has all their data in an air table, but you're not really sure how to use it or, or put it in, um, I'd like to, uh, to hear from you and, and let me know what you're struggling with or if you have any preferences on like what backend you want to see um, used to fetch all this data, um, then we're going to go through a couple front ends. So I know this is a, uh, it's kind of all over the place. Um, that's just, <laughs> that's just kind of how my brain works, I guess. But before I go in and make all this content or do anything with this, uh, I figured it makes sense to, to see what you, the viewers uh, are interested in seeing. Um, maybe you're looking for alternatives to WordPress, or maybe you want to use WordPress as your, um, as your, you know, as your CMS and as your database, but then render that elsewhere. Um, you know, of course, the, the more sort of traditional approach to that is using something like Next.js or React or Nuxt or uh, SvelteKit, Astro, Gatsby, all those sort of front end solutions to render that data, to, to get that data and render it properly into a front end experience for, for people to interact with. Um, but again, there's um, some decent front end builders that some of which are open source or, or have very generous free options that will allow us to kind of learn all this stuff and how we query data, not just from a custom post type on the same database, but bringing it in from a separate database. And so hopefully that's somewhat clear. Uh, I know, again, I threw a lot in here, but uh, I wanted to, to hear what you guys think about this and what kind of stuff you're interested in seeing. So uh, let me know down below in the comments. Feel free to send me an email, whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, so looking forward to, to creating some of this stuff and kind of going through how this might affect your workflow or you know how to think about it in terms of being a WordPress developer, uh, but you know building sites that might not always be in WordPress. So anyway, that is the extent of it. Let me know what you think. If you hate the idea, great. <laughs> Let me know that also. Uh, if you want to just see Bricks content, that's fine too. Um, anyway, that's that's basically it. So appreciate you sticking around and look forward to the next video.